Hello guys, welcome to today's video. It's uh, about your physics data booklet. This is a paper that you already know probably. Your teacher introduced to you already. Um, this is an important paper for us because uh, you are going to carry it with you during the, the school year. You are going to use it all the time during your practice or your exams, etc. You are going to eat with it, you are going to sleep with it. You're, it's going to be your best friend through this two years program. Uh, we are going to see the most basic uh, things and how you should read the, the paper. Uh, this paper can be found online, uh, but there is something that you need to be careful, is that here it says first assessment 2016. So this 2016, it's very important for us because at this year the syllabus changed. So if you find older versions, it's going to be a little bit different. Not a lot, but still it's not something that uh, you, you, have, you, you should use. Uh, this paper for us in physics, it can be used in every exam. So paper one, paper two, paper three. It's not like the other sciences, like chemistry, for example, that you cannot use the data booklet in the first paper. For us, we use it every time. So it's very important and we should know how to read and how to use it. So let's go through the paper. We are going to see page by page the most important things. So here you can see the contents uh, in the very first pages until page uh, four. It's uh, very basic things that are like uh, constants and symbols and mathematical equations that we, we can use. And then after that, the rest of them, they give you all the equations that we are about to use in our problems. So here in the first page, we see the mathematical equations. Well, this is something that you probably know. It's uh, very rare to... It's not very rare, but you, you might forget something, for example, the volume of the sphere, or if you want to be sure that you use the correct formula, you can come always back here and uh, see the formulas. Important things to remember here, it's when we talk about lengths, like circumference, we have the power of one. When we talk about areas, we have the power of two, here and here. Surface area of a sphere, it gives you area, okay, two dimensions. And of course, when we talk about volume, you have three dimensions, so we have the power of three. So this is how you can like quickly see which formula you can use and to be sure that you use the appropriate formula. In the next page, we see the fundamental constants. So here, the most important constants for us that uh, we're going to use. And here, you can see also that they are mostly categorized. What do I mean by that? Here you can see, for example, it says acceleration of free fall. So this one, it belongs to topic one. Then it continues with gravitational constant. This one belongs to topic six or 10 for HL student. Then the next ones, all the way down here, it's topic three. The next ones also, it's topic five. The next ones, it's topic seven until here. And you have topic eight and you have topic 12 as well. Now, of course, some of them they can be used in other topics. For example, speed of light. Of course, it can be used topic four or topic nine. But in general, uh, when you are working in a specific problem, for example, let's say you topic in electricity, when you come here in order to check a constant, you know that you find the one here, let's say Coulomb's constant, then whatever you need, it's going to be next to it, a little bit up or down. Anyway, it's not, easy, it's not hard to find the constants because there are very few of them, but in general, here it's how they are categorized. Also, uh, there are a couple of them that you are going to use. You are not going to use all of them. You might, but it's more likely to use very specific ones. Now, which ones are those? Of course, here it's the gravitational, uh, sorry, the, the acceleration of free fall, the gravitational acceleration. For topic three, probably you will use the Avogadro's constant and the gas constant for ideal gases. Then we have, in topic five, you're going to use Coulomb's constant instead of the permittivity of free space. Here, speed of, speed of light, of course. And uh, this is the ones, uh, of course, the electrons charge. And here are the most basic ones that you probably will face. Now, another important thing to see here 
it's about the masses of different particles. So here it gives you the mass in kilograms, in units of kilograms, it gives you the mass in the atomic masses, and also it gives you the mass in units of energy over C squared. Well, of course, we use this one in very specific cases, applying this famous equation, of course, in order to find the rest energy of a particle, you don't have to use here the kilograms, the mass in kilograms, and multiply by speed of light. You can use the, these units here, so you can easily find your number with the units that you want. So these are the constants. Now, next paper, it's the prefixes. So here we have all the uh, different multipliers that we're going to use. Again, here only a couple of them that you have to know. And after all of your practice that you will do, you will remember most of them. Now, important ones are the nano, the micro, milli, centi maybe when we talk about distance, and kilo. So these are the ones that you probably see mostly, ah, maybe mega. Anyway, whatever it is, whatever prefix you, prefix you see in front of uh, any kind of number, you, unit, you just come here and find the correct number to apply. Then we have here units conversions. This is also important. Um, but again, something that you will use definitely, it's going to be the temperature. Not definitely, but more likely. The SI units for temperature is Kelvin. It's not Celsius. So if you have Celsius in your problem, you need to convert them. These ones here, these three, they belong, belong in topic D in astrophysics. So this is an optional topic. So if you do another one, if you do I don't know, engineering or whatever, this is not important for you. You will never use it. Then the next page, it comes with the electrical circuits, the symbols that we use in the electrical circuit. So here for us, again, only a few of them we are going to face usually. It's going to be the voltmeter, the ammeter, a resistor, of course, a capacitor for topic 12, no, so topic 11, electromagnetic induction, of course, the cells, and uh, the lamps. Usually, it's just an element of your circuits. But anyway, everything is here. And something important that you have to remember, it's here in the, the resistor. It's this rectangle for the symbol. But if you practice by your own, then find, for example, I don't know, like uh, exercises on the internet or whatever, you might see a resistor having this symbol. This is also another symbol for resistor, but for us here in IB, this is what you will see always. And now we'll go to the most important thing. Here, you can find all the equations that you will need. Only very, very few. And uh, there are a couple of equations that uh, you might have to remember or memorize. But in general, everything you need is here. Now, here is a trick part. You might see some formulas and uh, you might not remember what it is because there is no explanation next to it. So what I recommend to you is when you get this paper from your teacher, and it's going to be your own paper, you should, every time that you work in a specific topic, let's say we work here in the topic two, you should write next to the formula what it is. So here, for example, it's Newton's second law. And now you will tell me, but what? I will not know what is this. Well, of course you will know. Of course, you can understand here that we talk about static friction. Here we talk about dynamic friction. But sometimes there are a couple of formulas. Let's go here, for example, that we can see topic, in topic 12. So here it's the radius of the nucleus. Here it's the number, uh, the nuclei, nuclei number left on the sample. Here is the activity of a sample and so on. So these are more obscure to remember. So it's going to be better if you write here whatever each one represents. So in the end, you're going to have a data booklet that is going to be fully annotated with everything that you know. So you will know exactly what to look for. And when you see something, you know exactly what it is. Another trick here that we can do, it's when we talk, for example, here in the kinematic equations. All these symbols, we should know what they are. 
So next to it, you can write, for example, S, it's displacement or distance. U, it's initial velocity. V, it's final velocity. And so on. So you know the symbols, what are they? Also, another, for example, this specific situation with uh, quantities, you should write next to each equation which quantity you are missing. Because we are missing one quantity in each one of them. Here, for example, you are missing distance. In the next one, you are missing final velocity. In the next one, you miss time. In the next one, you miss acceleration and so on. So every time that you have a problem and you see your known quantities and your unknown ones, when you see that you don't have final velocity, for example. So you come here and you know exactly which equation you are going to use. Of course, after a lot of practice, this is going to be like super easy for you to understand which one. But anyway, for the beginning, this is what you should do in order to make your life a little bit easier. Now, another thing that I want to tell you here, as I said before, there are a couple of formulas that they might not be here and they should be very useful for us. Here, for example, you can see power. Power is the force times the velocity. But there are other formulas that uh, <laughs> you, you, we usually use. For example, the power, we know that it's the rate of doing work. So it's the work done over the time. Now, if you know that the power, the, the work done, sorry, it's also the change in energy, then the power, it can be the change in energy over the time. So here there are two extra formulas that you might have to use at some point in your exercises, but they are not here. So that's why you should write whatever you miss here in the free space of the boxes. So in the end, you are going to remember also that you have a couple of extra formulas that you can use. And this is about the equations. It's the exact same thing for all the other pages because here you see the next topics. Uh, also, I forgot to tell you that these topics are categorized in the subtopics, as you can see here, 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, and so on. So every time you can write here what every formula represents, you can write extra formulas if you need, and so on. What I want to show you here, it's until this page, you see the subtopic 8, 8.2 and 8.1 are the last ones for the SL students. So the SL, it stops here. Then we move to the next ones. The next ones are the HL, so the topic 9 to 12. And here we start with the optional equations from the optional units. What I want to show you here is that they are also separating these different subtopics. And you have, for example, A1, A2, A3. It's for everyone, SL, of course, and HL. And here, the A4 and A5, it's only for HL. So this is how it is, also in the next ones as well. So this is my recommendation for you. Use this paper, use it a lot. It's going to be very useful for you, and you definitely have to know how to read this paper. So that's all for today. Study hard about these two years. It's going to be very difficult, but in the end, you will make it. Good luck.